Today we're going to be unboxing this Mint In Package APS camera, taking a look at some expired APS film and seeing if it's still a format that's worth shooting today. Hey everyone, Sean here with photodeox.com and welcome back to Film Friday. Now I was at the antique mall the other day and I found this mint in package Canon Elf LT. I think this is from the late 90s, early 2000s. And I just love how compact this camera is. This is one of the smaller point and shoot electric film cameras I've ever seen. And the reason it's so small is because it uses this film. Uh, this is APS film. It was made in the mid 90s to the mid 2000s as kind of a attempted replacement of 35 millimeter film. But we all know 35 millimeter film is still available while this stuff is not. So clearly one format went out over the other. Uh, but you can still get this stuff expired and you can still find cameras that shoot it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this guy up, we're gonna put some film in it, we're gonna go out, take some shots and see if this is still a format that's worth shooting today. Now I could keep this mint in package and become a collector's item in the future possibly, but I'm not gonna do that because I like using cameras. There we go. Now I'm actually blown away by how small this camera is. It's super compact and it's way lighter than I thought it would be. I thought it would be heavier with electronics in it. And that was the whole point of the APS line. It was an attempt to make a camera that was more compact that could compete with some of the digital cameras that were starting to come out. Camera companies knew that some people had trouble with 35 millimeter film. The film could get jammed, they couldn't load it properly. And what was great about the APS line is you literally just dropped a cartridge of film in, and the drive in the camera took care of the rest. So it was really kind of an attempt to make a dummy-proof consumer camera uh, that was easier to load than a standard consumer 35 camera. Now you'll see there's a little switch back here, and we can choose either C size, H size, or P size. Uh, P is panorama, H is high res, and C is classic. And when you turn this lever, it's actually changing the viewfinder uh, for the crop that you're gonna be shooting at. Now, when you use these settings, it didn't crop the image. It wasn't using like a mask uh, to block the light hitting the film. All it did is it put a code under the photo to tell the printer how to crop it uh, when they made prints. I'm probably gonna just keep it at H because uh, that's high res, that's the largest extent of the film. And because I'm gonna be scanning this film myself, uh, I'm gonna be scanning it all at that size anyway, so I don't really have to worry about using Panorama or Classic. So this was very much a consumer geared format and 35 millimeter just won out in the end. The only APS-C film you can get today is expired. Uh, this stuff cost me 20 bucks on eBay, and this expired in 2003, so quite a bit ago. Loading film is super simple. They really wanted to dummy proof this. So you just uh, pull this lever here to open, line it up, drop it in. Okay, let's take this camera out, take some shots and see what we can capture with it. It's a beautiful evening here in Northern Illinois. It's almost 80 degrees, warmest weather we've had this year so far. So a great time to take a camera out, take some pictures. Now this camera has a 23 millimeter lens, but because of the APS crop, which is similar to the APS-C crop in DSLRs, it's about a 1.5 crop. That makes it closer to a 35 millimeter lens, a 35 millimeter full frame equivalent, which is great for a little point and shoot camera. Now you can get APS-C film developed at the darkroom. It's $15 per roll of APS film. So it's a little pricier than 35, but they charge more because it's a specialty format and it makes sense. Uh, but I still think it's worth it, especially for how compact these cameras are and how novel it is to shoot with a camera like this. They're not making fresh film and the film that does exist is going to continue to get older. Uh, so give it another 10 years, you might not want to shoot APS anymore, but I feel like 
because they were making the film up into the 2000s, there's still a lot of decent expired stock out there. So I think it's definitely still worth shooting for weird photographers who like shooting with weird formats, at least for the next decade or so. Today's video is brought to you by photodeox.com. Photodeox is a photo and video gear and accessory company. Anything you need, we've got you covered at photodeox.com. And to learn more, click the link in the description below. I'm Sean with photodeox.com and happy APS shooting.